This is GED teacher Damon Tennant, and in this video, I am going to walk you through a GED practice science test. And so what I have here on the screen are, is, is about five practice test questions that I'm going to walk you through. We're not going to actually do the problems. I'm going to leave that for you to do. And there's a link below this video that you can click on and actually get this science test and do it on your own. Um, but what I want to do is I want to kind of walk you through how to approach GED science test problems, because this is one of the key things. A lot of people, when they think about science, you know, they think about, well, I need to study this subject. I need to study that subject. Maybe they study a little bit of biology. Maybe they study a little bit of astronomy, maybe a little bit of, uh, uh, uh geology. But, you know, when you take that approach, you know, number one, the test is not based upon your knowledge. It's based upon your reading skills of science-based knowledge. So while it's not a bad idea to uh, to do a little subject practice, and I definitely have my students do that, but I don't do it for the point of view of memorization. I do it from the point of view of just getting them accustomed to, used to the types of science questions that they're going to face so that when they get on the test, they're ready and able to do part two. And part two is to understand what the five reading skills are. And so uh, I'm just going to tell you a couple of them right now, and then in future videos, I'll share the others with you. But the first one is comprehension. And comprehension is, is very uh, basic uh, from the point of view of, can you look at this chart and answer a question that is specifically there to be found to get the answer? So let's take a look at this one, uh, number one. Um, and the other thing I really recommend doing is really focusing on the information provided first. And so when you see a chart or you see a graph or a picture, make sure you understand what it is. So you come up here and say new tuberculosis cases versus new vaccinations in California 2010, 2015. So right away from that, you know that these are uh, uh, a review and in, in a, in a graphical display of TB cases versus vaccinations, okay? And then you come over here on this side um, of the axis of this uh, graph and you see number of reported cases. So on this side, you're gonna see the number of reported cases um, versus new vaccination. So that's what was over here. And then here is the years, 2010, 2011, 2012, all the way through uh, 2015. Okay. And so, so what you're going to see here is, uh, in 2010, you see that there were a hundred and I believe that's 18, 118, this is in thousands. So there was 118 thousands of TB t cases cause that's in green. And then here in purple, you're going to see TB vaccinations, because that's in purple. So in 2010, it was very high. It was uh, 118,000 cases, and only uh, about 27,000 were getting uh, vaccinated. Then you move to 2011. You see that there it was a drop in vaccinations, actually, and it spiked a little bit in actual cases. So now you're starting to see kind of some type of comparison going on between boy, when there's not many vaccinations, there's a lot of cases. Then you see up here, there was a big spike in vaccinations. And then you see, uh, you see a drop here. Uh, and then more vaccinations, more of a drop, more vaccinations, more of a drop. And so even before you even look down here at the question, you want to come up here and say, hey, what is this really telling me? And then that way you're in a better position to answer the question. So coming back over to here to comprehension, comprehension is is a skill that uh, really focuses on, again, as I said earlier, what can you see here? So now we've kind of used our comprehension skill. Now let's look at the question. Which conclusions can below can you draw from the data presented? So that's a new skill. That skill is analysis. So that's information that is not specifically presented here in the chart, but that 
meaning that you can't go and find that answer here, but using this answer here in your own reasoning, you can draw that conclusion, and that's what analysis is really about. So let's look at this uh, specific question here. Which conclusion below can you draw from the data presented? A, TB is on the rise in California. Well, no, it's actually the opposite. You see TB incidences going down in California. B, the public health system is improving. That's a possible one because vaccinations are definitely increasing. So let's hold that one. C, increased vaccinations has led to lower incidences of TB cases. That's a really good one. So as you see the vaccinations go up, you can see those go down. And so is there a factual way you can absolutely prove that vaccinations is what did it? No, it could have been a lot of factors. But with the information we're giving, that's a conclusion that can be drawn. Vaccinations are known to have several unpredictable side effects. Well, we don't really hear anything about that here. So it's really coming down between B and C. And C is really more the stronger conclusion because this conclusion is specifically about TB cases. B, you can draw that conclusion, but it's more of a general conclusion that the public health system is improving. Well, you don't really know that. I mean, you can see that this sector of it is improving, but there's many sectors to public health. So maybe cancer rates are through the roof, or maybe diabetes is through the roof, or maybe you know, children turning up with lead poison is through the roof. So, so B and C is classic GED. And let me just point this out here. This is classic GED. So you have two responses that can't possibly be correct, and then two that are, put, are, are probable. And so this is classic GED. This is what you want to understand, that B and C, um, both, if you're not reading carefully and if you didn't do that pre-work that we did on this graph, you could easily believe that it's B. But that's a general statement. C is more of a specific statement, so that's a stronger conclusion that you could draw. So again, that's the analysis skill that I just uh, demonstrated to you uh, at work. Let's look at the next slide. So again, here we're looking at um, a, a, a picture, and then this is a picture along with um, some text. And so that is something that's called uh, a synthesis question, where you're using information from uh, two different sources and putting them together to answer the question. So there's a quote here and there's a picture here. That picture is the same chart that we saw on the previous page. And then you are uh, uh, asked another uh, question uh, drawing on your analysis skill, which is also part of the synthesis skill. But again, synthesizing a text and a picture problem. This is something that you're definitely going to see on the GED test where they give you a graphical and a text and you have to draw information from both to answer the question. Then moving on to C. So now we're looking at photosynthesis. So we're moving into another branch of scientific knowledge here. Um, and so this diagram is talking about photosynthesis and there's a question about that. So again, this test is really designed to kind of prepare you um, and, and, and get you going um, what you're going to see on the test. This fourth question is a, a biology question um, looking at uh, cells. Now, again, you don't need to remember what this is about. You just need to have some basic information, um, understanding of it. When you sit down for the test, make sure this isn't the first time you've looked at uh, cell uh, 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 mitosis since high school and you're going to be in a better position. And like I said earlier in this video, I do give my students specific science lessons. We do do some astronomy. We do do some biology. We do do some geology. We, we, we do some of these different areas of knowledge just to get their minds flowing, the juices flowing so they're prepared. Um, so this is one of these classic GD questions as well. So the first thing when you see this question, the first thing you're going to do, you want to just check out. Um, you know, you, man, who wants to read this whole thing? 
thing and then look at that. But again, um, I structure this question in this way so that you can practice your skill of staying focused. You have got to read this and you've got to look at this and you've got to make your comparisons. So it's very key when you're working on the GED science test that you don't flag. And by flag, I mean you don't um, you know, get tired or, 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 or kind of drop off. You got to stay in it. And then the fifth question here is another uh, text question. Um, and, uh, you know, again, kind of focusing you to, hey, you got to get your mind where you can read these, you know, a little bit thicker passages, understand it. One tool I use is I go through and I underline things and I, you know, mark things and you can do that mentally as you're going through the test so that these things stick better as you're going through. And then the final thing I will just share with you is the deluxe package. The deluxe package is uh, my way of creating an all-in-one package that will give you specifically what you need. This worksheet is actually a, a pullout of the Get Your GED uh, Now Test Preparation Series deluxe package. And what that does is it gives you step-by-step, -step, you know, here's what you're going to do on science and here's what you're going to do on social studies and here's what you're going to do on math and here's what you're going to do on RLA with grammar and reading and, and also the extended response to the, uh, the, your writing sample. Um, so this program uh, is available at my website, mygedlive.com. This worksheet is a pullout of that program, just giving you a sense of when you're working in our program, here's how we prepare you and here's why my students have success. The final thing... <clears throat> that I will say about that is that there's also an online component. So as you're working through these worksheets, you always have the ability to post your questions there. And then I get back with you personally uh, to answer your questions and to make sure that you don't get stuck. Uh, thank you very much for this video. Do not forget that the link to the science test is below uh, here in this uh, YouTube video description. Uh, if you like this video, please like it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so that you can stay afloat and up to date with the latest videos that I'm producing. Again, this has been GED teacher Damon Tennant. Thank you.